Okay, today we're going to look at the creating mythical beasts or um, chimeras, if you want, um, in Photoshop. Now, there's lots of resource on the internet for this one. If I just bring up the, um, the web pages here, and we'll just flip back to this one. So, the um, chimera is traditionally in Greek mythology a mix of three animals, and there's some background info on this one here. And there you go, the lion, the snake, and the goat. And you could, in fact, do your first exercise like that. But um, we're going to play around a bit. So Chimera is three, but um, you could just do two if you wanted to. And some of the examples we're going to do are just two. Now, there are plenty of resources on the net. And if I flip down this page, you can see quite a few. Um, and there's a bit of a tutorial at the end of this page, which could help you as well. Um, and there'll be links to that with the, the worksheet that's available. This page here has got 17 examples, and I love this one because the names are here. So we've got the Dorse, the Duck and the Horse, the Sleer. Um, this one is my absolute favourite, the Killer Penguin, the Killer Whale and the Penguin. And I mean, it looks so well done, but the animal looks so impossible too. And that's what I love about it. It's just the absurdity of it. And, and there's plenty more, the guinea lion, the slork, and so on. There's 17 here, we won't go through them all. But you can see the ideas. So, we're going to make Photoshop Chimera. So, where do we get our creatures from? Well, this page here, Nobacks, is a really, really good resource. Because they're all PNG files, so there's no backgrounds on them already. Which makes it a lot easier to edit, because you're not trying to... Um, get rid of backgrounds that don't work and, you know, having to use the, um, uh, what do we call it? I've forgotten the tool, it doesn't want to, you know, the clones, you're not trying to use the clone stamp tool to, um, you know, fix up bits that are, are there. You can just tr straight erase things that you don't want to see. So we might start with that using the images from here. Plus these are all Creative Commons images, so they're all available for, for use um, for this sort of stuff and for, for student work. Not available for sale and for profit, but they can be exhibited, they can be used um, in projects and so on. So nobacks.com, and you can see animals, birds, food, insects, you know, there's lots of stuff, nature, objects, you can get peoples even. You know, there's plenty of things to use. So we're going to pick some um, images from there. So I'm just going to close this down now, because I've already um, got my files ready, and I've got them here. here. I'm going to show you the... Um, animals that I've made and the ones we're going to look at. This one is the crow fox eagle, or the crow fox eagle. Um, three animals, you'll see it's a PNG file as well. Um, again, from that source, and the image quality is pretty good. I also made a snicken, which is a snake and a chicken, but um, those legs are actually from a camel, just to make things a little bit um, more unusual. And what you can do is if you want to extend yourself um, you can create a couple of animals, more than two or three, but you can place them in an environment. So let's look at the crofoxigals in the desert. And look, they're interacting with snickens. So obviously crofoxigals and snickens live together in a desert environment. And you see in this example, I've put shadows and that in there, and I can um, do a later tutorial on how to do that and how to actually create this more advanced um, image. So this is where you can work towards. But today, we're just going to look at um, creating our animal. And so the crofoxigal is going to be our, our tutorial. And there's a few advanced um, tools in this one too. So I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'll open my um, file of, it, of um, photos. And these are all from that website I showed you. They're all from Nobacks. And we'll bring up Photoshop. So first thing I need to do is to create a new file. So I'm going to go new. Um, and I'm going to use A4, of course, because that's our standard size. I'm going to create it, accept all the defaults because they're what we want. Um, because I have to create a background because the images have none. So that's why I've got that there. So first thing I need to do is I need to look for my fox. And there he is. So I'm going to drag him in and drop him. See, there he is. He's actually a bit big right now, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. I click the tool up here and I'm going to place it. Now, we have the, the age-old problem. He's come in as a smart object. You see that there. Now that's no good to us because we can't edit a smart object. Look, if I go and get my eraser tool right now, 
Can I try? Oh, see, try to erase him. I can't. It needs to be rasterized. So, right click or two finger click, depending on how you got your Mac set up, or your computer set up. If it's not a Mac, and we're looking for rasterize layer. There it is. Rasterize layer, and look, that funny little box is gone. So it means we can now edit it and do stuff with it, which is of course what we want. Now at this point, I'm not going to do anything with him other than bring in my eagle. So there's my eagle. I'm going to drag and drop my eagle. And there it is there. Click up there to place. Again, rasterize it. And um, I'm going to want my crow's head in a bit. But I'm going to leave my crow out of it for a bit. So, so I'm just going to make a fox eagle, or a fox eagle, to start with. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get the, um, the wings attached to the fox. Now, if I grab my eagle layer here and drag it down, I can drop it behind the, um, the fox. So, so you, you can drag and drop your layers to put them however you want. Uh, it's a bit like stacking sheets of paper or plastic, actually, two sheets of plastic. So there we are, and that's basically where I want it. Now, my fox is obviously too big. So I'm going to go click on my fox layer, I'm going to go edit, I'm going to go transform, and I'm going to scale. Now, I start to scale, but whoops, that's a problem. So I don't apply that. I'm going to go edit, transform, I'm going to go scale, and I'm going to hold down the shift key. Now this is standard for 99% of um, software programs. This stops the um, aspect ratio being destroyed. So I can move the fox down to about the size I want. I can move him into position to get a bit better look at him. Do I want him a bit bigger? Yeah, we'll make him just a bit bigger. And there we go. And we're going to apply that, um, that layer. So we've now basically got a, a fox with wings. Bit of an issue here. We can see bits of the... Um, eagle that we don't want to see. So if I go to my eagle layer, I just select my eraser tool. Just make sure the opacity is on 100%. Doesn't matter whether the brush is soft or hard, this one. I am on that layer and I just get rid of what I don't want. Now if I want to see what I'm getting rid of, I can turn the um, fox off. And just get rid of bits of the eagle that I know I don't need. So there we go, and um, here we have our very simple fox eagle. So essentially, we've made a chimera. So at a basic level, this is fine. This is the first step, and um, this would be, I suppose, the minimum that we'd expect from uh, most students to be able to do something as simple as that. It's not that difficult. But we're going to take this a little bit further. I'm going to show you some other tools in a minute. Um, I'm going to add the, add the crow's head on now. So I'm going to get my crow. He's over here. I'm going to drag and drop him. There he is. Now, I'm going to place him because I want him. And I'm going to rasterize him. So that's done. But of course, he's in the wrong layer. He's in the wrong spot. So I'm going to drag my fox so my fox is behind him. I need him to be over the top of my fox. Now, I think he's pretty close to the right size for, for this fox, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase what I don't want to start with, or most of it. So there it is here. Make sure I'm clicked on the correct layer, obviously. And I'm going to start erasing. You'll see I'm using a soft edge tool, so I've got that blurred edge, uh, which is handy later on. So getting rid of most of what I don't want. Okay. Now, just to make my life easier, I'm going to start putting him into the worst spot that I want him to be in. That's a bit better. Yeah, and I'll go back to my eraser tool and take that bit out there. Might bring that up here. Okay, now I can see I need to make him a bit smaller. So edit, transform, scale. And hold my shift key down. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. Right. Now, Got this bit I need to get rid of again, so I'll get my eraser tool because I don't want that bit there. Okay. 
Now, this shape out here is annoying me, but there's a way to get rid of it without erasing it, to, to still use it, because I want to keep the edge of it. So I go to Edit, Transform, and if I go to Warp, watch what happens when I start playing with these tools here. So that's looking a bit better. And I apply that transformation. So I've got him pretty well attached over here. If I want to bring his head down a little bit more, I could to about here. And I've still got a bit of thinking to do. So now I've got to get rid of my fox's head. So I go over and click my fox. I go to the eraser tool. And I start erasing my fox. Um, don't erase too much at this point because there are a few things we might want to do. Now, I go back to my crow. I just want to join them in a little bit better. Um, so if I go to my, I've got my brush, so if I go to my opacity up here and I drop it down to about 20%, I can then take away little bits of it. And if I zoom in on the navigator, you'll see this a bit clearer. I want it to blend in, see, and I'm taking away not all, just some of the, so the feathers and the fur are blending together. Just so it looks a little bit more realistic if you want. Could even bring the head down further if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it like that for this example. So there we go, basically a crow, for, crow fox eagle or crow fox eagle. Now I'm going to show you one little tool that we haven't used before very much, but it's fun in these ones. I'm going to show you puppet warp. So I'm going to go edit puppet warp. Now, I'm going to pin, oops, go to the correct layer here, sorry. No, that one, here we go. Sorry. Don't apply. I'll go back to my, I want my fox here. So now go edit puppet warp. I'm going to pin the feet because I, I don't want them to move. I'm then going to put a pin here because I don't want to move here. And I'm going to grab the end, pin at the end. Now, if I grab the end, Basically, I can move the tail, and it's going to rotate around this point here. I've locked all these. You've got to be careful to lock all those, because sometimes it moves them a bit. Um, this is used in animation and making GIF files quite a bit. So um, that's why you don't want to move. You want to get into the habit of doing that. So I apply it. There it is. You can just see the little animation thing happening there. I'll go to my eagle now. I'm going to go edit. I'm going to go puppet warp. I'm going to pin my wings, but what's this? And there we go, bring this here, bring these around. Uh, we'll bring this back a bit better. That looks good, we'll apply that, and we'll do the same for this one, other side. Ooh. Yeah, we'll do the same. So I'm going to go puppet warp again. Pin it. Get our moving up a bit. Use a bit like fingers the way you do this. Yeah, we'll do that. That's good. Apply. Now I'm going to go to my crow's head. Do the same thing. Edit, puppet warp. I want to pin along here because I don't want that to move. More pins the better. I'm going to put my swivel pin there. And this one, just a little drag for the head that comes down. And maybe I'll bring that up a little bit. You see what sort of things you can do with it. Do all sorts of stuff. I'm just trying to get the head down a bit. And it's got a bit of a hook on it. Do I like that? No, I don't like that, so I'm not going to apply that one, so I'm going to go, don't apply. Um, I'll leave it like that, but I wasn't happy with the way that was bending the beak. I might have to play around a little bit more with it. So there we have it, basically, our crow fox eagle. And if you look at it, we'll just pull it away bit by bit. So we've got the, the crow, and you can see where I've um, taken the bits out of it. 
and faded it in. Um, you can see a mistake there too, so I'm just going to get on my eraser tool and tidy that up. That's one of the advantages of looking at the individual layers. Then I add my fox in. Um, am I happy with where he is? Maybe I could move him down a section. And the arrow keys on your keyboard can move your images one pixel at a time. It can be really handy, but we might just... No, we'll leave him where he is. Just a fraction in there. Um, but then I add my eagle in, and that sort of fixes all that up. And my background. Now, that could be any background, really. You don't have to have a white background. But there we go, crow, fox, eagle. Very simple, um, to a degree. And I mean, you can just do the straight fox, eagle. Um, if I didn't hadn't taken the fox's head off, you could just go back and flick that back, and you'd have the, um, the tail moved and the wings. So you could have just done that. In the spirit of the true chimera with three animals, we've added the third one. So that's what we want to start playing with. That's what I'd like you to, to look at. Don't forget, I'll flick up this fellow again. Here he is. And you'll see where I've used the puppet warp tool there to make him look different ways. I've flipped the whole thing around here. Um, to create little scenarios with your different animals, you could make them different sizes if you want to as well. Um, so it just helps you create a more realistic yeah, interesting um, environment. I mean, and these are sort of things that are used in movies um, all the time. You think of the Harry Potter series um, with all the wonderful creatures that uh, were there, most of them which came from a Greek mythology or different mythologies, um, but some of which are invented by J.K. Rowling as well. So it's a fun task. It um, relates to a lot of uh, cinemagraphic and um, art traditions. So there you go. Have a go at creating your Photoshop Chimera. Thank you.